Today I'm going to speak about blur, blur in photography. I love blur. It gives so many creative uh, opportunities and it gives a touch of mystery, of mysticism to your photos. In painting, I'm a big fan of Edward Munch and of Gerhard Richter, also of uh, Francis Bacon. These are well-known painters who use blur a lot. In photography, some well-known artists are William Klein, Daido Moriyama, and some less known, maybe like Olga Karlovac and Betty Go from Singapore. And I know a lot of people who use blur and it's always, mm, it has something artistic about it. It has something fascinating to me. The important thing is that blur should be done on purpose. Okay, sometimes it's just a photo that mm, didn't work and the effect is so cool that I keep it. So I have some accidents which then are declared as art, but in fact Mm, I tried to make my blurry photos on purpose and not just by chance. I think blur is a good playground because you can use it everywhere. You can use it in street photography, you can use it in landscape photography, you can use it in whatever kind of photography, except normally for product photography, obviously, but even portraits can be very mm, interesting if you have some blurry aspect in it. And what I think is really cool, you don't need any special equipment. Obviously you can use a certain lens, a certain um, things, items that you put on top of your objective to cover it like a, a little uh, nylon sock or you can put something. But I usually tend to not use too many things to put on my camera. I rather move the camera or I catch movement with a long shutter speed. For many decades, pixels were the only thing that counted. The more pixels, the sharper the picture, the better. Well, I'm not a really, mm, I don't really agree with this. I think that pixels and sharpness are fine. They are wonderful, but blur has the same right to exist. Specifically in street photography, I like to use blur to give the photos a certain um, ephemeris feeling. Something happens very quickly and then it's over again. So someone passing by or the whole city is moving and this, this uh, fuzzy feeling that you get in a rush hour, you can uh, try to get this emotion into your photos using blur. You can also use the meteorological situation, like very strong sunshine in the mountains or at the seaside, or also rain. Rain is a perfect filter that makes you um, have blurry pictures if you do it in the right way. So I use uh, windows of the car or a bus where I'm sitting, or um, in the city some, some windows where the rain fell on, and so you have the drops, and that makes a perfect filter that makes everything appear blurred that is behind it. You can also create blur if you have several layers, like different windows, and you photograph through these so that you have this yeah, reflections and, and strange uh, things that happen to the light uh, directions so that you have these multiple layers that cause a certain blur in your pictures and, and the subject is out of focus. One of the best known ways to use blur is speed. So either you focus on your subject and you try to keep it in focus while you move with it so that the rest is blurry or you put your camera maybe on a tripod and everything is fixed except for your subject which is moving. I love to play with overexposition as I said before, on the seaside or in the snow where you have this strong, strong sunlight and then you put your camera to a setting that makes the 
the light even much more explosive in your photos and that causes a certain blur as well. And then additionally, if you put a slow shutter speed and you tilt your camera slightly, then you get the, these effects. Besides street photography, I love to use blur in nature photography, especially because I don't focus that much on a specific animal or a plant. I rather focus on the, on the feeling that I have when I walk through a forest or when I am deeply emerged in nature. So what I want to transmit with my photos is a feeling. It's not a scientific documentation of a certain species. And this way, especially since I'm a scientist, so I'm very happy to have this possibility to use blur to get all this scientific stuff out of my photos and have more emotions in it. And these emotions to me are transported through these blurry, fuzzy uh, images, which show something colorful. Uh, they so show an atmosphere more than something really mm, concretely there in nature. A special form of blur in nature is haiku, which is uh, well known in Japan, where you have these haiku um, poetry. And so people started to apply this poetry and these thoughts about um, a rhythm in the words also to blurred photography. So this is a specific way of photographing where almost nothing is uh, sharp and you just get a feeling of things that surround you. In the case of landscapes you can use blur for example by mm, moving your camera or you use fog or you use some other mm, playing like uh, driving out your zoom lens so that while it's turning and you have a long shutter speed, you get these uh, strange effects. It's more plain than art, I guess. And water. Water is a perfect place to play with blur. You can use the, the water surfaces and the reflections. You can move your camera on the water along the horizon. You can mm, use something that is reflected and uh, isn't really recognizable, so everything is blurred in a way, nothing is really on focus and you transmit just an emotion in your picture. But in the end, as I said, you can use blur everywhere, in architecture, but also for things that you encounter in the city. Uh, everything that has a shape, everything that has a color can be used for blur if you do it the right way. And usually the way it works best is trial and error. I tilt my camera, I play with my camera and maybe one out of ten photos gives the effect that I want. But that's okay, that's fine. I play around, I have a lot of fun and in the end I keep one of these pictures because it really transmits the, the sense, the artistic sense, the mystic sense that I want to uh, capture. Well, I usually don't take selfies or auto portraits very much. But in the pandemic, <laughs> I played around with my camera and I found, I found it interesting to do some self-portraits with a blurry mm, atmosphere, just because I didn't like to uh, show myself in a very mm, clear way. Yeah, so it's been decades that I've been playing with blur and I summarized all this in, a, in an article that just uh, was released. It's in German, I'm sorry, but I will try to translate it into English also. Well, basically, today I gave you a summary of this article. And uh, yeah, my advice is go take your camera, whatever camera you have, and just play around. And you will see that with a bit of uh, practice, you will be able to find really cool ways of uh, using blur and of doing things on purpose so that you can control the blur in your photography.